friends, welcome to another short series um, that I'm going to start for you over this period of uh, being stuck at home really. I'm going to do a rather in-depth view of my Imperial Orc character Skywise Fowl's clothing. Um, he's my character for Empire Arc. Hopefully if you've uh, gotten to this video you've probably seen the rest of them and you know what Empire is by now, but if you don't it's the largest LARP in the UK that uh, myself, Andy and Sammy attend, along with about two and a half thousand other people, maybe two, two thousand two hundred ish. Yeah, it's more than two. It's a lot of people. Um, we all play Imperial Orcs. My character's called Skywise Fowl. And uh, I'm going to do you a rather extensive kit breakdown. Um, other people in the past have done uh, videos themselves getting dressed into kit. We've done uh, a couple of kit explosions where we've just taken a photo of each layer of kit. Um, but I'm going to do what I think is going to be quite an in-depth look at the clothing that I wear. Um, I guess as advice or as ideas for aspirational kit. Um, mainly just to show off all the clothing that I wear that you will never get to see in the field because I wear 70 million layers of clothing on top of it and I want to show off what I wear so there's that hopefully it will be informative and interesting along the way um, we shall see I guess you're stuck with me for about the next three and a half hours as I very slowly dress up into a foul and show you all the stages along the way. Enjoy. So, first things first are the underlayers. And this is where it's gonna be a bit more out of character than in character, um, because these are sort of the clothes that I wear underneath my kit. Um, so this is fairly sort of international now, rather than just orc related. Um, I wear thermals, as most people really should do at the cold events. Um, so the first layer I put on is a thermal top. Um, I've also got thermal trousers on under my vaguely IC trousers, um, but I'm not going to show you them because that would be weird. Um, so they're sort of what I start off with. Um, if it's a warm event, I'll probably just wear a t-shirt because I like to change out my bottom layer underneath my actual kit um, because usually I just wear one robe for both all three event, um, all three events, all three days. Ideally, I'd have three under robes so I can switch them out as my bottom layer. Um, but we're getting there. That's why I'm building up my kit and that's why I'm showing you off this uh, fairly extensive view on the layers that I do have. So the first layer that's in character that you see are my legs and my shoes. Now, the bottom half of everyone's kit, um, I kind of feel like that's the bit that most people don't particularly think about because it's just well it's just trousers um for orcs and for you know winter mark and maybe for varushka it's leg wraps as well um and that's kind of it it's you know i've got some generic leg wraps from chows um i've got some nice shorts that i wear that they actually stop at the wrap um and that's you know you never see mine so it doesn't really matter i could in theory be wearing anything um but, I, as I've said previously, I like to get dressed up into my clothing, um, so I try and have every layer as in character as possible. Um, I was going to say sneak peek, but that's the wrong phrase. Um, bonus extra info? Elasticated waists. They are amazing, especially on your underlayers, um, because I wear a lot of belts and I wear a lot of belts around my actual sort of my natural waist as opposed to where your trousers where I'd have a belt on my trousers so these being elastic means I've got nothing to worry about they're not going to go anywhere they're not going to fall down and um, I've not got an extra layer clinching in my waist which for me because I have a hernia um, is not a good thing to do anyway now the next thing I would put on, I'd usually have a robe on now um, because it's probably cold, it is outside. I usually wear more than one layer, um, but I'm gonna get dressed in the sort of most convenient way for me at the minute. Um, so next is 
the last bit of my legs, I suppose. So I don't usually wear armour um, because I don't fight. And I'm not really going to get attacked in Anvil. So I don't. Th this isn't a usual addendum. Um, but I'm going to show you because this is kit I've worn in the past. And it is. That's half of it. Um, it's a nice padding and some very simple greaves. So it's just your basic Mithlon sort of gamberson, um, which I didn't mention my boots. Um, so my I've got two sets of IC footwear. I've got my rigger boots that are my steel toe cap work boots, and they're just really plain leather, um, as plain as you can get. I'm going to fall over. Um, but they do, because really, all you see is the toe caps. Um, I don't worry about these, that's kind of, it's fine. Um, and my second pair of IC footwear I wear um, are my wellies, which have nice leather welly covers on that Matt D has made me. Um, but I can wear armour, I can't wear armour with my wellies, but I can with these boots. And these are great, and they're much more comfortable, and I can run around a lot better in them than my wellies. However, I was about to knock a cup of tea there, um, they're not as waterproof. And I think, well, they are, because most shoes are, but I think I've already um, kind of gotten past the waterproofing on them. So these are my warm weather shoes, but instantly, with a bit of a cover on the top, I mean, you could do it with spats or it's general sort of leather greaves. Um, that's kind of covered everything. Oh God, I'm really not good on my balance. Um, and hopefully you can see that well enough. So I'm gonna put the second one on because I might as well. Um, as you can see, they've got a nice, I could wear these just as they are. Um, and in fact, Andy sometimes does because they've already been aged up from the kind of rust and gump that comes on the back of these plate legs. Um, I've actually, I've put these on the wrong leg. I always have personal preference, probably doesn't matter either way, um, but I always try and have the buckles on the outside of my leg, just so that these flappy doodles don't get in the way when I'm running, um, because it gets really annoying if your leg armour starts clanking against each other. So they're just on vaguely loose and kind of as as you see so that's my legs completely done now you're never going to see my legs um, and in fact in the summer and autumn I often don't wear trousers um, I've still got underwear on obviously but when it's really really warm and I'm wearing about seven layers of kit on my top half I need to ventilate somehow so I usually just wear either a pair of shorts um, or just my undies under my robe um, so that actually if I pick it up, you can see my knees, which isn't good. It's not a good look, not when this is all dark green and these are pasty white. Um, but yes, so that's my legs finished off. Ta-da! I mean, this is very, my kit is very heavily detailed. And there's a lot of work gone into it. I dread to think how many hours are on my top layers. So my base layers are fairly simple. Um, they're kind of, they're all that they need to be. Um, my kit is aspirational as everyone's is. I add to my kit basically daily. Um, but my bottom layers pretty much stay simple, easy and practical. No one's really gonna see them um, or you're going to see very little of them, so they're as easy as they need to be. Um, now my top layer, I actually build, I'm sorry, I build, I tailor my clothes to fit me when I'm wearing jumpers, because it means that I can do this. I can have a nice, lovely beige Primark jumper um, that I can wear under my robe in winter. So I've already, it's nice staining on it already because it's lived in and I seem to wear all my clothes to work. I've, I've already got 
you know, th this is my normal attire. You know, I've got my normal trousers that I wear because I don't wear jeans. Um, and I've got a jumper, you know, a nice beige jumper because beige is the best colour. And this is my normal everyday get up. And I can wear this under my clothing, which means I'm never going to be cold. Now, granted, I am an orc. I'm not going to be cold anyway. But my advice, almost, for, almost for everyone, I would say, would be have your in character clothing. Um, thought out well enough that you can have enough layers underneath that you're not going to see that you can be either warm or ventilated enough that you're comfortable because if you're just wearing a woolen tunic you're gonna get cold if you're just if you're in the brass coast you're probably gonna get cold anyway but you need to have enough stuff on underneath that is in character or practical and warm enough and you're not going to see it that it doesn't matter so that you can survive because th these days get very cold um obviously we're not having a winter solstice until later on in the year now um but e1 is always a really cold event and you've got to be careful um you know i wear thermals almost all year round apart from in the summer um, you've got to make sure you have that ability to wear them underneath your costume um, and that you have enough pairs that you can change them out. So th this is me, you know, somehow I've now got up into more of my normal clothes in a in-character kit uh, expose. But there you go. So bottom layer's done. I'm now going to move on to my last bottom layer. Um, which is my under robe. So this is my most recent creation. And you're going to watch me get into it and make a fool out of myself. But this is my... Uh, in fact, it's the newest bit of kit I have. And just as I bop the light... So this is a... It's a woolen robe. Ooh. I forgot to mention um, the trousers are acrylic wool so they're nice and warm they look in character not that you see them um, but they are they are acrylic wool um, just so I can wash them because I use them as regular clothes now what I don't have um, is something to clinch my waist so I'll be back in a minute Right, so, I'm just with a bit of, which is actually some wrapping off an axe I had, um, just with a bit of a shape so that I don't look like a uh, upside down Dorito, this is my very first bottom layer. And as you can see, what I, what I tried to do with my kit, um, and again, more advice to new people, or well, more advice to anyone, because we all keep learning. Um, the costume, or rather the clothing that I wear, I have the bottom layer as detailed as the top layer, so that if I need to just wear one layer of clothing, then I can. And what I'm going to show you in a minute, when I put my last bit of clothing on for this video, is... I'm going to be wearing the minimal possible amount that I can be foul as, or that I could be any Imperial Orc as. I sound like I'm hungry. Um, so that if it's a really warm event, then that's all I need to wear. Um, or if I'm in a rush and I need to get out and I need to put my mask on and then I can dress everything else up and put all my other clothing on while I've got my face on. And in fact, what I usually do now is I put my mask on sooner rather than later um, just so that it can go underneath all of my collars and all of my neck wraps just so it's all definitely tucked in and sorted out. So I'd usually look like a sad panda at the minute with my eyes and my mouth painted um, but I don't. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to talk through this now and then I'll do some close-ups of the detail on my robe um, after I've sort of explained it all and gone through the next bit. So 
the last one I had had really large sleeves. So this one, I've had it, it's the same pattern as my darker beige um, robe, which a lot of you might know or have seen, um, but I've actually taken the sleeves in on this one. So one of the small signs of sort of aspirational kit, I don't have a better phrase for it, so I'm probably going to say that a lot, but it's you make something once, you make it again, and you're able to make it better. So I've actually taken in the sleeves I just just pinned it so they were smaller but I've actually made them fit perfectly to me like I said with the jumper underneath or the ability to have one um, but it, it's just a really nice fit on the arms now and I've also changed the um, is it godet I say gusset but apparently it's not gusset Andy was saying it's a, a godet or a godet which is this middle sort of triangular panel um, they're a slightly different shape and they're a bit easier to sew at this time. Um, but yes, so the last bit of my under kit that I'm wearing, and I I think I'm rambling a lot. I hope this is all right. It's a, I know it's kind of a lot of information to take in. It's not particularly interesting to look at. Um, but I'm kind of just talking through everything as I go. Hopefully it's interesting um, and hopefully you'll stick with it. But I'm trying to sort of go as in depth as I can with my kit, because um, this is really the only time anyone's ever gonna see it. So the last bit of my under layer I wear are just a pair of cotton gloves. So that's instantly covered my fingers. Now, arguably, you could say, oh, I'm wearing wraps underneath my shirt. So it might be, um, especially because my new jacket now has long sleeves, it might be that that's me done. Um, now, really, I want to wear wraps because every orc is supposed to wear wraps. Not every orc does, but the majority of orcs do. So I'm going to put these on and I'm going to twist them around like I usually would. So I picked cotton gloves. Um, these, I think these are the ones that have actually got the little touchscreen able, what's it, so I can still do all my out of character business with these on before time in. Um, I did have a pair of, no, these are wool gloves. I did have a pair of cotton gloves, um, but they got a bit knackered. I actually wear two pairs. I wear a pair with fingers and then a pair of fingerless gloves. So that in effect, they're kind of my fingers and these are the gloves, um, but no one really, you know, I can be wearing gloves in Anvil. And what I do is I took the first one under the sleeve and I took the second one on top of the sleeve um, because when you wrap something around your arm, because it's bigger at the top and it tapers, sometimes I find my wrap slip. And if this gap isn't properly covered, then the, the wrap's still there, but sometimes you can see a sort of sliver of skin underneath, which I very much don't want and are finding new and interesting ways to make sure that doesn't happen but so yes like I said two pairs of gloves I'd suggest these in any nation as well if it's cold don't be afraid to wear gloves these ones I believe it was two two pairs of two gloves so I got like four gloves for six quid from Primark um, so I have, I'm not sure if I'm gonna do a monetary count as I go but at the minute, it's pretty much nothing. The, the fabric for my under robe. So my parents live on the south coast, and uh, and there's a shop called the Dorset Scrap Store. Um, some of you might know of it. It's sort of it's one of those shops where they just get loads of offcuts and stuff donated to them. So it's just full of. It's kind of like what I imagine a thrift store to be in America. It's just full of random tat, um, and they were selling. They had rolls of fabric. And we went and had a look, uh, Andy and I and my mum. And there was this big roll of, of what looked like this, like, you know, 20 odd metres of it. But it wasn't. It was six different bits of fabric in sort of three metre chunks. And they were samples. Um, and the best thing was, it was a quid a metre. So I think I got all, I just bought basically everything that was there for less than 20 quid. So this robe in wool. Um, about two and a half meters of it by about one and a half meters. Um, 
cost me all of £2.50 in materials. And because I had the pattern already, it took me about half an hour to draw it out and, uh, and sew together. It was a really simple, easy make. Um, it, and actually, it was really nice because it got me out of a bit of a creative slump that I've been in recently. Um, so yes, as I've said before, I think with these wraps, I've sewn one end to the glove um, for ease of putting on. I only go about halfway up my forearm um, because not that you're going to see these but when I had a in fact I will show you my old jacket when I had my old jacket it stops about there so it's nice to see a little bit of differentiation so it's not just all wrapped fabric going all the way up my arm um, and tie it off I'm only going to do a single knot, usually I do a double or I have someone to do it for me, fortunately, because I have friends. Um, but there we have it, and then I've got a little bit of detail just on, I'll go and I'll go up, um, I'll do a close-up of it in a bit, but a little bit of detail already on my bottom layer, so that like I said, if I had my mask and my neck wrap, this is Fennel. This is the bottom layer, it's the least amount of kit I need to wear, I'm completely in character, I can just have a have me belt with me weapon loops and pouches and whatnot and I could go. Um, I could be up basically in my pyjamas um, and I could be on my way. The bit of my leg that you do see, it's all completely in character, you see my wrap, you see the little gamblesome bits. Um, let's do a spin. Da -da -da -da. That's sort of it. Um, that's This so far has been your close-up of my under layers. Um, in the next video I'm going to do my armour because that's the next layer I put on. Um, stupidly enough armour seems to be the pretty much the first thing I wear. Everything else goes on top. If I need to change out of armour, if I need to go for conc to conclave example, um, or if I just need to take it off because it's too heavy, I've basically got to take the rest of my costume off. Um, so I don't suggest doing that, find a way that your armour can be the top thing you put on and then you take it off and everything else is already on. Um, but for my look as Fal, it works like that. So there we go. That's been my sort of monotonous drone of the bottom layers of my clothing. you kind of got on that, I've said that a lot now. Um, so yeah. Right then, and here we have a close-up of Fowl's underrobe, complete with a nice, wonderful trim. It's uh, a woolen trim. I believe this one's um, actually a, a replica of some Viking trim. Um, I think is it in wool. It is, and uh, I don't know what you what you'd call it, Andy. It's tablet weaving. Oh, cool. So I've had enough uh, enough to do the collar. Usually it comes in about two meters ish, which gives you roughly enough to do a collar uh, and two cuffs. Um, Who made it? Who made it? Uh, is it is it Draco or Draco Dracos? Dracos. I I, <laughs> I always think it's Dracov's daughter because that's the character we know called Father Dracov, but it's not. It's like Dracov's daughter. Dra Dracov's daughter. A link to Jen's shop. I will put a link to Jen's shop because Jen is a wonderful person who Andy met a while ago and I met in person for the first time at Arm and uh, they do brilliant stuff. So this is their handiwork. I've got some more trim um, that I could show you but I can't at the minute because I don't know where it is. Um, it is in the workshop but that lines my lovely new robe. And then the last bit of detail I've got, this was actually a gift. Um, so this little leather shield with a little foul on, um, it had a, it did have a troll cross. Oh, look at my horribly dyed thing. I've been doing some leather dyeing today and it's all uh, all gross and lovely on my fingers. There you go, have a close up of them. Um, this was a gift uh, to foul from another Imperial Orc, Iron Tide Yarn, the General of the Second Legion. Um, and that had been on my belt at Wassail. And I've uh, slightly repurposed it. I'm sure Dave won't mind. Um, in a way that Fowl would do to sort of almost put the slightly more important things uh, closer to his heart. 
I like the idea that um, the items of worth that orcs carry, the placement of them on their kit is quite important. Um, so if it's something from a colleague or an acquaintance, it might go on your belt. If it's something from a personal friend, then it sort of goes up up the chest, closer to the heart, maybe around the neck, um, or even on the head, depending on, on what it is. So I think there's a little bit of... Uh, there's definitely some reading in to the placement of items of worth that I'm sure many of us could do. And the last bit of detail, because I'm still making this, I haven't finished it quite yet, is I'm going to overstitch all of the seams. This is just a ball of yarn, um, some nice thick chunky wool, and I'm gonna. I've done it over the next seams. I'm going to do it around the sleeves, and I might well do it around the. Ah, now Andy's here. I can ask them. Are they godets or godets? Got it. That's what this triangular bit is. What's a gusset? It's kind of like the same, but it, it goes underneath, like. So you put a gusset in, like, the crotch part. Oh, okay. Or, like, under a line. So if it's, if, it's in a, uh, if it's in a sweaty place, it's a gusset. <laughs> and if it's next to your thigh, it's a godet. Or a godet. Mm. I'm seeing a nod. I'm seeing the grin. I think that's correct. So yes, there we go. The uh, ethereal voice of Andy there is the voice of all costuming wisdom. Um, but then, hang on, let me see if I can actually get a bit of a close-up of this fabric, because it's almost got... Is that like a herring bone, where it's a sort of zigzaggy pattern? <laughs> um, actually, that's not it at all, Matt. No, okay, Easy. it's not. I'm not going to say that it is because I'm, I, you know, I'm still learning. I don't know all this, but it's got a nice little pattern to it. There you go. Let's see how close I can get this camera to show you the nice fabric that I'm using. There we go. So, yes, this has been the first episode looking at my first layer of costuming and clothing. We're going to follow on next time with my armour because that's my second layer and uh, and then move on to probably my jacket so that's uh, that's been a close up of this I hope you found it interesting um, this robe isn't lined I don't usually line uh, my very bottom layers mainly because the fabric is really thick um, so I don't really mind that the seam on the inside isn't particularly in oh my fingers right in the way isn't particularly neat and tidy, but uh, obviously if I was making these for other people, then that would double over twice, just so the seam would be nice on the inside. Look at that. Look at that rubbishness. Now it's doing, it's doing all right. It does exactly what it needs to. Um, I'm going to put some of the same tablet weaving trim on the cuffs as well. Not that you'll ever see them, but I will. So there we have it. First layer down. Lots more to go. Thank you very much for getting to the end, if you have. Um, and I'm going to just sort of pan down to make this shot a bit more dynamic. Not really, it's kind of just very beigey fabric. Thank you very much for getting to the end, and I will see you very soon in the next one. Bye! Thank you very much for watching this video of me explaining all of my uh, ludicrous ideas and uh, all the ridiculous amounts of detail I get into with my kit. Um, as Sammy is always asking me to say, you better go follow us on Instagram right now. Go and look at that Instagram because I can I know how to do links now. So it's right here, maybe or here or here. Or, or here, or behind me, maybe. Instagram! That's what we do. I think we do the other ones. Maybe we do a Facebook now. Who knows? Ah, YouTube. It's not a real career, is it? <laughs> anyway. 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 Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, share. Comment. Follow us on Claire? Instagram. What are you trying to say that I say? Follow us on Instagram. Yeah, do that thing.
Bye.